Yeah, thank you, Pascal, for having me today as a representative of a TSO, a transmission system operator, which is active in uh, two European member states, uh, Belgium and uh, Germany. I would like uh, to focus on two aspects of the title of our event today, zero carbon and consumer driven. And I would like to pick up some of the aspects we have heard by the members of the European Parliament as well as uh, Mark. Uh, and first of all, we all know with the very ambitious target of the European Union to become the first climate neutral continent in 2050, decentralization as well as digitization will play a key role to tackle this challenge in the future. Decentralization uh, is uh, easily to explain. We all know that we had a situation in the past that uh, a few hundred uh, fossil power plants were um, the security of supply in our energy systems. And this is changing since uh, two decades now. Uh, millions of renewable energy generation capacities are established, are constructed in our member states of the European Union, and the process will go on. It's uh, obvious. Uh, and of course, also the electrification process will go on. We all know that not only on the production side, we see a decentralization, we see it also on the demand side. It's no longer only some middle-sized uh, industrial companies, some private households using it for the existing uh, capacity. It is also now in the transport sector with e-mobility, it is in the heating sector with heat pumps and also more and more energy intensive industrial processes will be electrified, mainly direct electrification, sometimes electrified by using power to gas or power to heat technologies based on renewable energy. So the role of the consumer is changing twice. It is changing, first of all, because he is now a prosumer, that's very clear. He's producing with uh, solar capacities or with investments in uh, onshore wind technology. He is producing its own energy uh, for his uh, security supply uh, and also for the system as well. But he's much more as only a producer. He is also an integrated part of the value chain. First of all, he is uh, a resource of flexibility with e-mobility, with heat pumps, with storage capacities in private households, also with industrial companies, with data warehouses in the future. We have a lot of flexibility in the system and we will need this flexibility because we all know the volatile system of renewable energy will need flexibility. And the third aspect of the consumer-driven world in the future is, and it was mentioned by Mia Petra earlier today, is the role that we want that consumers have the opportunity to harvest the benefits of the new system, optimizing the energy bill, aggregating and pooling flexibility from solar panels, home batteries, electric vehicles, and heat pumps. That's the future of a consumer-driven system. Does it mean that uh, a grid infrastructure, a cross-border grid infrastructure is no longer needed? Will it all be organized in a decentralized system with digital technologies? Of course not. We all know that the demand side for electricity in the European Union is, is so large that we will need a lot of offshore wind capacities from the North Sea and the Baltic Sea and the Mediterranean Sea as well. We all know that cross-border interconnection will guarantee also in the future that we can organize security of supply and that a single market for energy in the European Union will be needed. And that's the reason this combination of interconnectors, of uh, offshore wind farms, of maybe mesh grids in the future in the North Sea or in the Baltic Sea, and the decentralized world I was uh, talking about a little bit earlier is an extremely complex situation which can only be managed by using digital technologies. And only a few uh, examples for that. For example, balancing will be based in the future by fully exploiting any kind of flexibility in the system. And these are often very small aspects of flexibility, very small households. Another aspect, blockchain technology for green tracking. We will see more and more industrial companies who are interested not only by a PPA, interested by maybe 
a certificate that this is green electricity produced in a special area, that these green tracking aspect will become more relevant and blockchain technology will help us to do so. And third and last aspect, uh, artificial intelligence will be needed for the control centers in the TSO system that we can make better decisions, that we can uh, decide faster as it was in the past. And last aspect, of course, we need to offer platforms for consumers. When I talked about prosumers, it is obvious that these very small group of people need an opportunity to interconnect, to cooperate. And there we need a kind of platform economy in the future, also in the energy world. Elia Belgium is offering something like that together with Belgium TSOs in an internet of energy world. That's only one example. We have seen many more examples like smart charging infrastructure for the transport sector, which will be needed to reduce the peak load in the late afternoon. So digitalization is key to handle the system in the future. Last message. We shouldn't underestimate in the energy system of tomorrow the power of the consumer world, but we should also not overestimate the opportunities which can be based only on a decentralized system. Zero carbon will only be possible if we combine the decentralized consumer-driven system with a very strong infrastructure for the single European energy market in the European Union. Thank you.